This episode, we're painting our dapple gray horse. You're not going to want to miss that. Let's get started. Well, good morning. Welcome back to the shop. My name is Brett. And as you can see, we are in our paint booth and we're ready to start putting the uh, dappling effect on our dapple gray horse here. And we'll go through it a little bit and I'll show you how to do that. And I've done that in the past. And again, if you're interested in more of an in-depth on how I do this, then again, click on the link right up here and that'll take you over to one of the videos on, you know, airbrushing and painting a dapple gray horse. But I figured, you know, we're in here. This is what we're working on and be kind of probably fun for you all just to kind of see it. And I don't know, maybe I'll even do like a time lapse and you can kind of watch it come together here. But I'll try to go through it again, um, some of the steps as best I can. Last week, you remember, we did quite a bit. Uh, we worked on the other horse for Pittsburgh. That's going to be a medium on a glider. And we worked on that one and got it roughed in. Uh, we finished up the bow rockers and all that needs done on that is to give it a, a, a good sand. And then once we're done here, we can bring that in and then we're going to uh, go ahead and get the primer put on that. That'll be, you know, later on here in the week. But today we're going to focus on just working on getting this horse dappled and we'll get that done here. So what I like to do, again, for now, what I use is just Createx uh, airbrush paint right off the shelf at, you know, any uh uh, Hobby Lobby or Michaels or that kind of thing and I do thin it out just a little bit with water and That's about all I do. So I'm just going to start with gray and we're just going to go in and I like to mist it That way I can kind of get a feel for the gun again see all the paints flowing see if I need to thin a little bit more and Another little pro tip I can throw out there is the hooves we know are going to be black so if your gun starts to file up and starts to clog a little bit, you'll see me go back and forth quite a bit, keeping the gun clean as, you know, again, as best I can. But if I do feel like it's starting to gum up or something, I'll come down here to the hoof and try to pull that trigger back really, you know, far, as far as it'll go and unload. And that hoof there, again, we're going to paint it black. So that's just a good spot there to kind of clean your gun and to test it. But... Got my paper up here. Looks good. So all we're gonna do is just start to mist it. This color that I have here is more of a blue gray, so it has a nice blue tint to it. And, um, you know, you can kinda it, judge for yourself. Sometimes I do it a little bit darker. Um, I might add a little bit more blue when I'm doing it, but this one I've been using for a couple of years, this color, and I like it, but I do like to darken it just a little bit. So all I'm going to do, put my glasses down, is just lightly mist everything. And I'll just go around it. The compressor I've said in the past, I used to have it down underneath here in my metal cabinet here, um, but it just seemed to be getting a little bit too hot. It was too loud, so I brought it up here and set it up on top, so I apologize if it's a little bit loud. Eventually here, we'll build a cabinet and do something next to it, and we can tuck that down inside there. I was even thinking about possibly on the other side of this wall is my miter saw in that whole area there is maybe I could put that out there and just kind of plumb it in into here. So something we may do down the road. You know, another good area too, if you feel that your gun might be gumming up or not spraying right, is up underneath here where the saddle goes. That's another good area to kind of pull that trigger back if you need to. I'm not an expert, believe me, on airbrushing. I've said that before. I just know enough to sort of get by. And what I'm doing is not that difficult. It's just practice. But I am not a master airbrush. So you, those of you that are out there that airbrush, you know, take it easy on me. Go. 
that looks good. Go ahead and add a little bit more. And I'm going to just start dappling here a little bit. When I dapple, it's just figure eights. So I'll come over here and just over to my paper here and just sort of get warmed up. And all I'm doing is just a series of figure eights and then I try to work on the size. And I don't think you can see it, I don't have the camera. And maybe I'll show you here later. But I'll come over here and practice. So if I'm doing a small horse, you know, I'll work on my dappling and try to get them to a size that I think looks good and then try to work that and keep that in my mind. So when I come over here, I kind of have the size of dappling that I want to do. This one's a medium. So we're going to do dapples somewhere maybe a little bit larger than a, than a quarter, um, somewhere around there. And so I'll come over to my paper and just start to, you know, get the feel of it and try to get that size into my head. Let's see if I can bring you over here. That's as bad as far as I want to bring the camera. Hopefully we won't get that banding, that line. I've been noticing that if I keep the camera somewhat out in the door and zoom in, we don't get those lines, that banding going through the, through the camera. So, but anyways, I'll just kind of come through here or come over here and just start to pull that trigger back a little bit. That might be a bit big. That's more like it. And it's just a fig it's just a, a series of figure eights. And I just work my way around. That looks good there. And I like using gray. Let me move the camera back again. And yeah, I was going to say, I like using gray um, paint. I don't like to go right in with black. You can, but I kind of like to, to build, again, layers. And those of you that follow me and we're in the paint booth painting, you'll see that I do a lot of layering. So I'll start with a base coat. And again, if we're doing like a chestnut, a blood bay, you know, a buckskin, you'll see me paint with all kinds of different colors and I just continue to layer on the colors. So this is kind of the same thing. So I start with gray and then I can kind of get my pattern down the way I like it. It's just really, really soft. And then you can kind of go back in and slow yourself down and darken that gray a little bit more, bring out some of those highlights. And then I'll go over it with the black and I'll just, you know, we'll go over it with just a little bit of black and bring that out and darken some areas here and there. So that's kind of the trick. That's how I do it. See that? That paint's starting to dry in there because I'm talking.
it's looking good. And as I kind of go up into the head area and, and closer to the main, I just really just kind of lightly add dappling. It's really soft. Good. I'll bring this down and just soften it. Then we'll come in here to the shoulder area. And again, we'll start a little bit more. Um, we'll go a little darker and just kind of feather it out. That's, that's all there is to it. I'll go ahead. That's pretty good for this side. Um, that just kind of went down real easy. Again, you can see me going in and just kind of darkening up a few areas here. We'll go back in and we'll revisit this some more because this is just drying. So as it dries, it's going to kind of fade a little bit more. Then we can go back in and we can kind of play with a little bit more of the dappling, darkening it. And we'll eventually come back, like I said, and we'll use black. And we'll just put some little bit of black detail in there. Now, of course, this is the side. I always have the main come down on this side. So this is another good area to just kind of, 
you know, practice, get a feel for it, get yourself loosened up. Um, so yeah, that looks, that looks good. Okay, I'm going to clean my gun out and take a bit of a break because my hand's cramping. And then we'll do the other side. Well, there we go. There's our dapple gray. I just finished airbrushing here this afternoon. And I think now I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry for a few hours. I'm gonna go ahead and get my finish gun all set up and ready to go. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and get the clear coat on this and get that out of the way. But there it is. All right, well, we are set up and ready to go. Uh, I've gone ahead, I've blown off the horse for any little bit of dust. I've looked it all over and everything looks really, really good. I did go ahead and set up my airbrush. Oh, the last thing I had to paint on here was the back of the saddle. I just do that in a dark brown. So that's all done, everything's good. I even did a test area over here. I always like to do that just to rule out anything like a contaminant, something that might be in the gun, uh, even the water, because again, these are this is a water-based clear coat that I'm using from Sherman Williams. So I just do a test area back here on the hoof because if something does kind of come up, um, some sort of contaminant, something that didn't spray right, well then it's a lot easier to just fix that hoof and instead of spraying the entire thing. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get my mask on and yeah, here we go. Let's give it a, Let's give it its first coat of clear. We're going to do three coats of clear on this guy. And uh, yeah, let's just, let's just get into it and get it done.
Well, that went down really nice. Fingers crossed, I, I, I've said it before, I always get nervous getting that first coat down. Once the first coat goes down and sets, then I feel a lot better. My anxiety kind of comes down. Boy, that went down really nice. So we'll let that set for about a half an hour, come back, give it a quick sand, a real light sand with 220, and then we'll do our second coat. There's our second coat. Laid down really, really nice. We're in the home stretch now, one more to go. And we'll see you in about a half an hour. All right. Well, here we go. This is gonna be our third and final coat. So let's go ahead, I'll get my mask on. Let's get it done. And then we can walk away from this. we go third and final coat boy I wish you all could see it and be in here and see this it just looks really really good I went a bit heavy up here that's why I was kind of just um, using the gun with the air part on my gun and just trying to get that to dry a little bit and just kind of set and then again we can just kind of walk away from it but I didn't want any sort of sags you know or or runs really we'd have a sag here i only have one area that sagged from our second coat just a little bit and i'm not going to touch it because i think overnight it's just going to settle down i don't think we need to do anything to it but boy it just it looks like a sheet of glass it looks really good Now, some of you that do finish and finish furniture and things, you may be wondering why I don't start at the top and then work my way down. I've tried all kinds of ways to spray these horses. I've tried spraying from the top and work my way down, but then when you come up underneath and do the belly, then you're spraying up. So there, to me, there really is no good way to spray these. What I like to do is just start on my legs and work up on both sides of the legs, work the insides, then come up underneath, and then kind of work my way down. And then what I'll do on my third coat is as I'm spraying, I'm trying to keep the nozzle of my gun pointed to the back. So if I have any overspray, then it kind of works its way towards um, my vent or my uh, fan over here. And that's how I do it. But like I said, there really is no good way. The other trick that I found is when you finish one of these, or even if you finish furniture, you really wanna lay this stuff down and it takes a lot of practice to do this, but you wanna lay your finish down where you're just at that fine line where you've, you've added 
I, I, how do we explain it, uh, enough on there that you don't want it to sag. So I mean, you're gonna lay it down and you try to get a nice even coat, a nice fairly heavy coat, and but you just don't want it, you, you wanna get it to that point where it's just about the sag, where you're about to see it run. And that's like I said, over on this side, you know, you can almost see it where it's just at that point to run. So when you are spraying up underneath here and you've got overspray, even if it gets on some of that wet finish, it just kind of melts right in. Hopefully that makes some sense to you. Good. I'll go ahead and get the gun cleaned out and we can go ahead and shut the paint booth up and then we can come back in tomorrow, take a look at it, and then we're going to be moving on the final assembly. I'd like to get the, the rockers in here next. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it on this video. I may just do it. And you'll, I'll show you what it's going to look like at the end. Um, we're still kind of going back and forth on the color that she would like. So it's all primered. We're ready to go. And I've done some, stain, some paint samples. So we're just trying to figure out the paint color that she'd like. And I'll just come in here and get it painted and get it cleared. So we're just that close to getting this pretty well finished up. Fantastic. Well, we'll see you all tomorrow. Well, it's the next day. We can take a look and see how our finish looks. It looks really, really good. I'll tell you, the, the more I'm using this waterborne finish, the more I like it. Now, for some of you that might be new to the channel, we've talked about this before here. I've been making this transition from the traditional lacquers over to the waterborne lacquer finish. Um, I've been spraying lacquer here for over 20, 25 years, and I just felt that the industry is starting to kind of go more towards the waterborne or water-based finishes. So I just kind of wanted to start learning that. And I've been using it for about a year now. Now this is put out by Sherman Williams, and this is their Chem Aqua Plus brand. And like I said, I've been spraying it for about a year now. And the more I'm using it, the more I really, really like it. And the results, uh, it's really, really, I I'm real happy and real impressed with it. Definitely a learning curve. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Uh, my first horse, when I sprayed it, I just kind of sprayed it the way I used to do it with the uh, traditional lacquers and I had runs everywhere so it's a little bit thinner so you definitely have to practice with it but like I said I've been doing it now for about a year and I've really kind of got a feel for it and I'm really really liking the results what do you all think now I kind of thought too this episode it might be fun we've done dapple grays in the past I kind of thought maybe it'd be fun just do a little bit of a time lapse so that's kind of why I went that direction you can just kind of kick back and kind of watch this all come together pretty quick and uh, yeah it's fun to do these dapple grays so hopefully you got something out of it I think this is where I'm gonna leave things for this week uh, the customer really hasn't settled on a color yet for her bow rockers they're ready to go I just need that color we can go ahead and move on from there but we at least have our horse pretty well finished and we're ready to kind of move on with final assembly once I get those rockers done. So next week when we get in here to the shop, we're going to go ahead and take our horse out and I should have the rockers painted by them, fingers crossed. We can go ahead and get the, the mane put on, the tail, the saddle, everything. Get this horse finished up, get it crated and get it on down to Houston, Texas to its uh, forever home. So. Yeah, that'll be next week. So once again, though, I really appreciate y'all hanging out with me here at the shop. And if you do me all a big favor and give this video a thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button if you feel you're getting a little something out of these videos, really helps me out in growing the channel. You can check me out on Pinterest, on Instagram. I started playing around with TikTok and my website is greenfieldwoodworks.com. If you'd like to try building one of these horses to check out my friends over at the rocking horse shop that's where you get the plans to do all of this they have the plans they have the tack they have the knowledge the know-how all of the books and the videos and the dvd all of that that you can reference and make your own horse if you'd like to do that so until next week happy carving we'll see you then take care